welcome back to the class everyone now that we finally have all the information on not only galactic legend leia's requirements but also what they're going to be able to do via lobot's rework we can now successfully put them all in their farming tier order <laughs> So for those of you who are unaware, we typically do these types of videos for every single legendary character that comes out. And the whole point of this is structuring how you should farm the Galactic Legend. The point being behind this is you have to bring up like 15 characters, some of which to really high relic levels. And sometimes it can end up taking six months to a year to actually go after a Galactic Legend. So the point of this video is showing which characters are higher priority that should be focused first. That you should go after that you should start investing resources. You will start seeing already a return on your investment in various game modes without just immediately going and putting gear on the crappy characters who really only value is the fact that you get a galactic legend by gearing them up. So that is how this is going to work. And you can see they are ordered in that tiering section. So we have S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier. And again, as a reminder, I've said this every single video for those of you who are new. This is not just an overall tier ranking for how good the character is, but really just when they should be farmed in the order that you can do this. And we do include characters that are not requirements, but in my opinion, really should be because of how you're building your roster. You need to be able to take advantage of certain things. They're going to be more beneficial to you, even if it delays the galactic legend just by a little bit so let's get right into it with the s tier these are the most important they are the transcendent characters that are soft required or just completely required for leia that you have to have working on first and quite frankly you should have all these characters even if you don't give a crap about leia they are just phenomenal and they're really important for core teams in Galaxy of Heroes. First up is going to be CLS. I don't really think I even have to say anything about this. He is a requirement at our 7-4 Galactic Legend Leia. And his lead has just kind of stood the test of time. He gives turn meter to his rebel allies every single time a debuff is resisted. Not only does his team give a bunch of debuffs, but there's also a lot of relevant counters out there right now that have ways of resisting those debuffs, like Rex using Tenacity Up on the Gas file first team. So you get a lot of bang for your buck with this, and you're going to see in the rest of this too, we're going to want to build up the whole CLS team before we really even go after Galactic Legend Leia. Not just because it's a good team in GAC for PvP, but it's also pretty important for PvP or PvE because it has a assault battle for the Rebel team that you can already start getting maxed out before you even have Leia. So CLS definitely makes the list. Rex is an interesting one. So the reason why he is so high in this list is because he completely transforms the Phoenix team. They go com from complete zeros all the way up to heroes. He has a unique ability that he's able to share with the rest of the team because that's how Hera's lead works. That just takes them to the complete next level. Not only does it give a nice percent bonuses here in the beginning with speed, tenacity, and a bunch of other stuff, but he also is going to turn them into an assisting machine. Every single time they use a special, they're going to call each other to assist. And then they also just get all these juicy TM bonuses per debuff, similar to Thrawn lead. So everyone really has phoenix in one way or the other maybe you got them to gear eight or nine to unlock thrawn which is very cool or maybe you got them all the way up to gear 12 just to kind of buffing up your profundity fleet a little bit getting rex up kind of as soon as you can i realize he's a little bit limited because he's on a hard note right now i myself am experiencing that but get focus on him as quickly as you can as far as the galactic legend uh leia requirements go because really whatever you have phoenix wise he is going to make them better. He's going to make them into a real team. And once the whole team does get going, you can start taking out really high teams like Inquisitors with Third Sister. Uh, next up is going to be Nubaka. There's really no reason other than the fact that he's a requirement. So we have to go after him at some point. And he just pairs perfectly with Commander Luke Skywalker. I mean, they were kind of custom built made for each other. He's going to be able to take a bunch of the leader stats. We're not going to spend a whole time on him because it's if CLS is here, he kind of has to be here too because they're joined at the hip in a lot of senses. Next up is going to be Jedi Knight Luke. And at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that we're going to have characters here that aren't technically requirements. And you are correct. Jedi Knight Luke is not actually a requirement when you go onto Galactic Legend Leia's list. It's just not there. That being said, I think it's a little foolhardy to not get Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker before you finish the Leia farm. And I'm going to show you guys why. And I was, when I was re researching this, I'm like, okay, so there's a little bit of crossover here. But when you really dig in to all the characters that are required for Giant Luke, 
you either get one of two things you get a a layer requirement cool that's what we're trying that's the whole point of this video or b you get a really solid core foundational team that you just need to have no matter what a foundation not foundational that's a fun word so you get darth vader awesome really important character seal us also a requirement 3PO Chewbacca, amazing characters that are necessary really to get the CLS that you're already getting to be functional. Lando and Rolo, also already required for Leia. CLS again, we already covered that. Hoda, really, really good character. Uh, ships, whatever, don't care. All characters we've already talked about. And then at the very beginning, Wampa. So you're getting characters like Wampa, Darth Vader, and Chewbacca. And then on top of all of that, you're going to be knocking out a lot of those kind of crappier uh leia requirements before you even have to worry about going and getting leia so just a kind of a nice way to work things out by getting him you're unlocking the full potential of the cls team you're getting some other really cool characters and then on top of that you actually are making progress in your farm han solo's here just because it'd be really weird if you went after cls uh nubaka who's already a requirement chewbacca and 3po via the jedi luke event and you didn't have han you don't have to have r8 by the way you can just get him to r3 to the point where he's not going to get one shot and ruin your whole scoring or the whole counter in general so doesn't need to be at the highest relic level but just get him done uh, next up is going to be the a tier team and these characters are again characters you probably want to have done anyways even if you're not going after leia that being said they're not quite as transcendent as the other teams in fact most of them just kind of take whatever team that currently exists to one level higher so lobot if you have sortie he's a great addition to the team we've made several videos now talking about his viability in there if you don't have a sortie lobot can go to the very bottom he is not really that good if you don't have her his whole thing is that he focuses on light side droid leaders if you don't give him that it's not really that exciting Next up is R2. We have really dubbed him, you know, Jack of all trades, master of not a one. And he's probably going to end up needing to be used with Leia. But if you don't have Leia, then that's kind of pointless in the farming order here. But overall, he just, he can be fit into any team. So the odds of you going after him, getting him all, all the way up to R8, which is where he's needed, by the way, he's pro you're probably going to start getting a return on your investment, whether you put him with a sorry droid team along with Lobot, or you put him with a JTR team because you were forced to do JTR because you had to do JML and you don't really have anything to go with it. Or if you put him with the JNK team so you can save your tank for another team. He has a lot of places he can go. Not particularly super important in any of them, but he can function in all of them. And then we have Scout Trooper. Scout Trooper kind of falls into the same category as our good friend Lobot in the beginning. If you don't really have Iden, then you push him down to the bottom. I guess maybe in a year from now, we'll have the new Gideon out. And if you have him too, you can apply the same logic. But for now, Scout Trooper doesn't really add a whole lot outside of Iden. He's going to be, or she rather, is going to be able to land um, days on the enemy Wampa, which cannot be resisted, which kind of stops one of Iden's most important counters out there. And really, even if you're just penciling your enemy into using one specific other counter, that's enough. Like, that's that's enough to prioritize her. She's really... Uh, that, that's enough to be important for a team if you're really penciling your enemy into just using one specific counter rather than the other. Next up is going to be our B-level characters. And they're actually really good characters. The reason why they're falling this low on the totem pole, though, is they just probably don't have a team that the vast majority of people are going to use. If you're going, if you've already gone after Jabba and your Boosh is already Relic 5, she already has a home and really her whole place in this video for you is pointless. If you don't have Jabba, then you don't really have a Boosh home at all and she's not that good. And the reason why she's falling in B and not at the very bottom is because if you do really want to, and you've, maybe you've already got on your way to do this, build a thermal bounty hunter team that focuses specifically off of thermal detonators maybe bobo leader something like that that gives extra term here that already has zam with her omicron and jc she can be good like she's not trash outside of jabba but she's also just not making waves and specific counters like maybe our good friend r2 is or Krex even higher up so overall good just not as good as the others outside of jabba a uh, drogon is kind of the same idea we don't know a lot about his character quite yet but i think it's going to be pretty similar to boosh in the sense that yeah he might do something really fun with saw or mod mothma but at the end of the day his ultimate home is going to be with leia and you don't have leia yet because you're watching this video right now well, in fact she doesn't really exist in the game now but if you're watching this video then it's because you're probably go going after her right now next up is going to be c tier and the reason why ewoks land in c tier and i probably should have said this in the very beginning is we are not taking into consideration the new raid at all and there's really two reasons for that number one 
we don't know enough. We don't know how many teams you're going to be allowed to use. What if the Ewoks are the sixth best team and you're only allowed to use five? Then just because you can use them in the raid doesn't mean you're going to want to. On top of that, we don't even know if this is the best comp. It, it might be like Tebow lead with Scout or something. We don't know the bonuses that specific characters are going to get, or rather even that even the faction. So I don't want to tell everyone here that like Ewoks are super high priority. You're going to need them for raid because I don't know that. Like that's not true. It, it, it could be, but... I would much rather people go after what we already know to be proven to be good and XYZ game mode rather than kind of taking the risk. And if you want to because you like them, then that's awesome. Do that. But as far as efficiency goes, I don't think I'm going to recommend them up very high specifically for that. Ewoks themselves don't have a ton of viability outside of the raid. And furthermore, the other reason why we're not going to talk about the raid is if you're watching this a year from now... Endor is already dead. Like, it, it, it's already come, it's already gone, and there's really just not much of a point to it. So, with this video trying to be usable, not just now, but in six months from now, a year from now, maybe two years from now, I don't know, the game's probably changed too much by then. But that's just kind of where we're going to put that for now. And last and least is going to be our dear D tier comp. So, I know that we talked about Captain Han Solo, Rolo, as well as Lando in the Janet Luke farm. That being said, if you did the Janet Luke farm before this, good job. But you probably only took them up to Relic 3 because that's where they're all needed. Don't bother taking them up to Relic 5 until you go after Galactic Legend Leia. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here right now with a freaking R3 Han Solo or uh, Captain Han as well as a Rolo. Because quite frankly, they're just not good. I mean, some people have Rolo for Platoon, so that's fun. But for the most part, just not that great. Akbar as well. And I know some people will get kind of mad at me for this, but... Akbar is also just not very good. You either have profundity, cool, or you're probably fighting targets that a gear 11 or a gear 12 Akbar can beat. You don't need to have him with all the shiny gear 13 pieces and Kyrotex and stuff like that with, with a few relic levels. He's, he's, he's fine here for the most part. I have no intentions of taking him up to gear 13 or really to relic 3 until I'm right at the cusp of Leia. I have plenty of other things to focus on right now that don't involve working on him. And then I do want to take a second to talk about post farm things. So up until now, if you've done all these first, you know, five or whatever tiers, you have all the requirements for Galactic Legend Leia. Congratulations, you have her. Great. That's awesome. But there's more. So two characters that I want to talk about very quickly that I think might be worth looking into once you've already finished your farm is Sana Staros and Stormtrooper Han. And the reason why, if you've gone through this farm and you've done the work of r 5 uh, Captain Han Solo, Rolo, Lando, they have no real team. I mean, th the only team that you can put them on a defense is going to get soloed by like five different characters, including Nest, who's not very expensive right now. If you put in Sana Staros with her tenacity down as well as Stormtrooper Han, you actually make a real team that's going to require a real counter. Sure, it, it gets beat by Bad Batch, but for a lot of people, Bad Batch and their 1,000 Cairo team is not exactly that cheap of an option. So I'm not saying you have to do this after you do Leia, but it's definitely worth a consideration. And then furthermore, you I feel like you have to do this. After you've done Leia, if you don't have JML or Jabba, you probably have one. But if you don't have one, go get the other. There is a ridiculous amount of crossover, especially if you're doing this the way that we're kind of prescribing it with Jedi Knight Luke being in here. He is needed for both, and he's probably the heaviest requirement because of all the things that he needs going into it. Han Solo is also needed specifically for Jabba at Relic 8. Boosh is as well. Lando over here is going to be needed for Jedi Master Luke. So there is just several... Oh, R2 as well is needed for Jedi Master Luke. And the whole team itself just kind of crosses over. So get working into those other farms again. Jabba and Jedi Master Luke are great for things that don't just involve uh, specific raids. Although Jabba is really great for the crate raid right now. But that's about to be not so important. So that is going to be the video for today, guys. Thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. So maybe a sleeper character out there that would be cool to add to the list. So that when, once you get some of these characters going, you can have the best bang for your buck. But until the next time, stay awesome.